When a bug lands on a carnivorous plant, it slowly curls its leaves around it so that it can't escape. But what happens when we use rotten chicken to attract thousands of flies and release five deadly carnivorous plants against them? Can any of the plants deal with this many flies or will they get overrun and die? Well, today we'll find out in the bait and switch. The fourth event of the Flytrap Games where we're searching for the deadliest carnivorous plant. This chicken is one month out of date and has literally attracted thousands of flies and even a few wasps. And seeing as Patrick here is covered in hundreds of tiny bugs, he should be able to catch at least a few flies, right? Well, dewy pines like Patrick here are opportunistic. They catch bugs that fly past and get caught on these sticky droplets by mistake or when they land on them thinking that they found some food or water. So this should be perfect for him. Now, just to let you guys know, each plant gets half an hour to catch as many bugs as possible. Okay. <clears throat> and the plant that catches the most, wins the most points in today's event. And it doesn't take long for the flies to show up and Patrick to start catching them. However, he isn't very good at holding on to them, yet this actually seems to be on purpose. In the past few videos, I've told you that Patrick is the stickiest plant in this tournament. And while this is true, he just can't hold onto anything bigger than these tiny flies. Now, he should be able to catch things as big as dragonflies. But between him being quite young and the sun here not being as strong as it is in Spain, which would help him grow stronger, he doesn't seem to hold on to anything too big. Which makes sense, because why worry about bugs that are are too big to hold on to. Might as well focus on what you know you can eat. However, this won't affect his points as today's event is about how many flies they can steal away from the rotten meat and get attracted to them. We already did their strength test two events ago, but to be fair, this is probably Patrick's best result yet. However, like I mentioned earlier, he isn't the only sticky plant in this tournament. The King Sunjus are the biggest Sunjus in the world, and as you saw right at the start of this video, do something that makes them extremely special. They wrap their leaves around their food as they struggle to get free. And as you'll see in a couple of minutes, I have finally managed to get some good footage of our King Sunju doing just that after today's event. But before that happens, the king actually needs to catch something. Yet, as we have seen in the past few events, he isn't too good at holding on to the bugs that come his way. However, there are a few good reasons for this. After a few minutes, we can see the flies start to arrive at the rotten chicken, and it doesn't take too long for some of them to get caught. Now, while the king Sanju is also very sticky like Patrick, and has apparently caught things like birds before, the reason he can't really hold on to these flies is because he's actually perfectly adapted to catching giant moths. You see, he smells a bit sweet, kind of like wine, which gets stronger every evening, which is also when the moths come out of hiding to look for food. And so, not only will the moths mistake him for food and get caught, but they also have much bigger, powdery wings and aren't as strong as these green flies. This means they get caught much easier than the green flies, and once they are caught, they flap their wings so much more than the flies would because they just can't escape. And if you didn't know it, these tentacles can actually feel when a bug is moving on them and the more they move, the more they know that they need to curl around whatever is there to eat it. And that's why after seeing him catch 30 flies, I knew that all we had to do was keep a couple of them on his leaves and he would start curling around them for the rest of the day. However, it's time we start looking at the top three plants in this tournament that will absolutely decimate these flies. Darling here is our cobra lily. 
She got that name because she kind of looks like a cobra and this tongue here is where her nectar comes from. But although she does look very deadly, she has been quite tame in the tournament so far and today is no exception. She manages to get one or two flies interested in tasting some of that nectar but for some reason they aren't interested enough in her to actually go inside her trap and get caught. I don't think her nectar is as addictive as the fly trap or pitcher plant that we will see soon but darling here is the only plant in today's event to not catch a single fly. Time's up. However, when it comes to the Venus fly traps, the competition starts to get exciting. DCXL and the other fly traps have done well enough in this tournament to put themselves into second position on the leaderboard. And just to remind you, each plant can swap out with another plant of the same species because, as you'll find out, their traps can fill up very quickly especially when the flies start swarming the plants. I have never seen this many flies in one place before and what makes this even more insane is that I have never seen a fly trap catch six flies at once. Between the dark red mouths of the traps, their tasty nectar and of course the rotten meat, it seems like the flies just can't keep away from these traps. But there's a very clear reason why. The stench of the meat attracts flies from all over the garden, something that the traps just can't really do themselves. However, as the flies start getting close to the chicken, instead of going to the meat, they end up seeing the dark red traps of the plant, which actually tricks them into thinking that the trap is their food. And so, as they land on these traps, they get a taste of their addictive and sweet nectar, and after just a couple licks of it, they are so hooked that they won't leave the plant anymore. This is a perfect example of how plants often trick animals to do what they want by looking and smelling like something else. Although this time, there literally is rotting meat around. DCXL was so quick in fact that as soon as I started seeing the swarm of flies, I ran off to get more fly traps to join in today's event. And even they started catching flies almost immediately after I put them in the greenhouse. They're everywhere. I've never seen something like this before. This is insane. However, we all know that there is one carnivorous plant that can deal with this many flies. Sarah and the pitcher plant. They have been wiping up the competition this far and seeing as they are known for holding thousands of flies in their pitchers, there is no better event for her than this one. As we've seen so many times before, that addictive nectar gets hundreds of flies hooked on her and those slippery walls and beautiful colors just mean she is an even more effective killer. Yet, as you guys saw earlier in the video, the wasps love this chicken, but they love the pitcher plants more. However, I used to wonder why the bugs can't just fly or walk back out, and you might be wondering too. But aside from the nectar literally being poisonous, which means they actually can't move anymore, and these tubes being too slippery for them to walk on, the shape of these traps are also very important. You see, not only do they guide all the bugs downwards towards their stomach acid, but if a fly flaps its wings inside of the pitcher, it actually causes a vacuum which means that the fly only gets pulled further down the trap. Now Sarah is so effective at catching flies I'm not going to even bother with counting how many bugs she just ate. She has completely filled herself all the way up to the top with them so clearly she has won today's event but that doesn't mean the rest of the competition hasn't become closer. 
Now seeing as I held my breath for hours while recording this, I'd hope that you might consider subscribing. Remember, if you do subscribe, you could also be one of five winners to get a cutting of the winning plant at the end of this tournament. After today's event, you can see pretty much every spot could change in the next event. If Sarah comes in last place and the fly traps win next episode, we will then need to have a tiebreaker. I'll see you guys there.